Hey everyone, in another video, we talked about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, and how these provided a good framework to spot individual events as part of a larger picture. The link to that video is down in the description. We talked about the 17 goals, but no discussion on how to pay for them. There are several options available, but in this video, I wanna talk about one option, and that's government borrowing. To fund projects and initiatives with longer payback periods, governments and corporations typically issue debt instruments. These projects can be related to improving water management, increasing renewable energy generation, building infrastructure adapted to different climate conditions, or any number of environmental or societal projects to improve standards of living. But of course, borrowing and debt can cause more problems than they solve. So let's talk about it. Before diving in, let's start with some basic definitions. There are plenty of terms in the world of debt investing that you'll hear in the financial press, but we really only care about five. Number one, face value, aka par value. That's the amount of principal associated with the bond. Par is from the Latin meaning equal or equal value. Number two, coupon. The term for the interest paid annually. Maturity, the length of time before the bond comes due and principal is paid back. Maturity decreases as time passes. Number four, price. That's what you pay out to own the debt. And five, current yield. That's the annual interest relative to the current price. Now, Debt instrument is another way of saying a loan or an IOU. It's just a signed document acknowledging a debt. IOUs are issued by corporations and by local, state, and federal governments. The mechanics are the same internationally, but this video focuses more on US government debt instruments. These are referred to as treasury securities, treasury bills, treasury notes, or treasury bonds. Or you may hear it with treasury shortened to T, as in T-bills. Now, bonds behave similarly across the world, though they can sometimes go by names other than sovereign or treasury debt. So for example, in the US, they're called notes, bills, and bonds, depending on their maturity. In the UK, they're called gilts, as in gilt-edge securities. Germany calls them Schatz, Baubel, and Bunds, and <laughs> sorry about the pronunciation, um, in the comments, if I messed it up, I apologize. Uh, Nigeria lists them as FGN bonds, which is just Federal Government of Nigeria. Now remember, there are two main ways governments can raise money for projects. They can raise taxes or they can issue debt. Sometimes the government raises taxes just to pay interest on their prior debt. But that is for another video. So how does this work? You buy some amount of debt for a state of maturity and yield. The maturity tells you how long you need to wait to get the face value of the IOU, and the yield tells you how much you'll be paid in addition to the face value. So for example, let's say a government wants to build a wall of some type, a seawall, for example, to protect a city from flooding due to rising sea levels. They estimate the seawall will avoid spending $1 billion in damages. To build the wall, they issue long-term debt obligations, IOUs, of $500 million. And they do this using the original crowdsourcing platform, the debt market. Now let's say I buy part of that debt at auction. I buy a bond with a 10-year maturity and a 2% yield for $1,000. Then I hold that bond for 10 years. When that bond matures, the government will pay me the $1,000 face value of the bond actually regardless of what I paid for it, and an extra $200 in interest. That's the financial thanks I get for letting them use my money for 10 years. Just keep in mind, you don't necessarily have to buy or sell at face value. Bonds are auctioned off when they are initially issued. That means the government may raise more or less cash than they planned. The demand at auctions help determine the yield for the next auction. If no one wants a bond yielding 3%, then the next issue may include bonds with a 4% yield. Contrary to popular belief, the bond market really drives interest rates, not central banks. 
To see data on debt yields, you can visit the U.S. Treasury website. Uh, the link is down below. Now let's talk a little about green bonds. On the surface, green bonds function just like any other bond. One difference is that in a true green bond, the funds will be used for a specific purpose related to saving the planet or at least mitigating the effects of something. Perhaps it's a changing climate. This is part of what is referred to as impact or sustainable investing. Like regular bonds, green bonds can be issued by corporations, such as utilities financing large-scale solar or wind generation, or governments to build seawalls or constructing zero carbon emission buildings. The money to pay back the bond comes from either the savings realized due to the project or collecting taxes. Countries like Belgium, Holland, Nigeria, and the U.S. have issued green bonds to finance low-carbon projects for energy generation, transportation infrastructure, and climate resiliency. You can see that the green bond market is growing fast. I've included the link to this graph down in the description. But buyer beware, not all green bonds are created equal. Like any investment, you have to do your homework. Issuers can say they're going to use the proceeds for a green project and then use the funds for something else, such as paying down other debt or building a dam, most likely not a green project. So how do you know what your investment is going to be used for? Well, one way is that green bonds are referred to as labeled or unlabeled. True green bonds are labeled, means they're registered as a green bond with a stated purpose and tracking for the outcome. The labeling process includes third-party reviews and certification. One trusted certifier is the Center for International Climate Research. That link down below if you want to check them out. Recently, Moody's, which rates debt instruments for risk, has begun certifying green bonds. Of course, traditional bond rating agencies don't have the best track record, so take that into consideration when researching bond investments. Now, just a word on environmental, social, and governance ESG investing. This category is very broad and may or may not lead to the positive outcomes claimed. Green bonds fall under the ESG category, but unlike the broader ESG definitions, green bonds are targeted to specific projects and outcomes. As someone who may want to support green projects and get a return on your investment, you have some decisions to make. How much are you willing to invest? What are your expectations about interest rates over the next three months or 30 years? What level of financial or social return are you looking for? How long are you willing to wait for that return? Is your green investment really green or just claiming to be? Just know that debt plays a big role in how countries function. By understanding debt, you can start to make sense of national political motivations, how interest rates can be used as indicators of future actions, and where policies and activities that claim to support global priorities, such as the Sustainable Development Goals, are headed. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you have questions related to sovereign debt, let me know down in the comments. If you found this video informative, please give it a like, and share it with your friends and colleagues. And until next time, go out and create some positive change of your own.